hi, this is Joe. Hi, this is Joe again with another review. And for today, instead of talking about a movie, I'm going to be reviewing a television show, uh, which I got reacquainted with thanks to the wonders of YouTube. And that's the original uh, show, Beverly Hills 90210. I am not going to be discussing the, the god awful reboot show that in on the CW network. And I refuse to talk about it because that show is so terrible. It's a god, it was a god awful show. I don't know why in the hell that show lasts for five years. Uh, so like I said, when we discussing the original show, which aired on Fox, and it, and it became a, a tremendous hit. And then it lasted for 10 years. It's the first really successful drama show that Fox had developed. Uh, because previously, the two big hits that Fox had or many of them at that time were Murder with Children and The Simpsons. <coughs> so, uh, you know what? they only had two, two hits on their hands by the time 92 and no story, but they had trouble with the new ratings. Uh, I mean, other than The Simpsons, a lot of the shows were, were bombing out. And 92 and no was no exception. Now, those of you who never saw the original show, you, you can't see the episodes on YouTube. Uh, so, so I suggest to you go on YouTube and see the, see the show because it's terrific. I, I don't have a very few complaints about this show. Uh, whatever complaints I do have, I am going to get to it. Uh, well, the premise of the show was the source off with the family, the Walsh family, who moved from, Min, Min, from Minnesota, Minneapolis actually, and they moved to Beverly Hills. So the first few episodes of the first season is mostly like a culture clash between the Ritzy crowd in Beverly Hills plus the middle class um, morals uh, family from Minnesota. And the, and the family from Minnesota is, the, is named the Walsh family. And the two parents name was Jim and Cindy, and the, and the two kids who were twins, supposed to be twins, Brandon and uh, Brenda Walsh. Of course, Brandon was played by Jason Priestley, and Brenda was played by uh, Shannon Doherty. And this was the first time in the show since she did uh, Our House. And I got into watching Nine or two, well, not right away, well, more than halfway through the first season and watched it and I found out that Shannon Doherty was there and I happened to have a question on Shannon. So Shannon, if you're watching this thing, instead of a question, you know, all these years later, uh, because she was on our house. So I figured, hey, Shannon Doherty from our house is, is in this show. So that's how I got hooked into it. And I thought it was a, you know, a good show. I mean, they did have some good topics for the first season. But the problem was was low mains and the reason how the show took off was because in the summer of 1991, they decided to have a novel idea and that's to air, excuse me, the stupid sciences. Uh, they came up with a novel idea and that's in the summer after the first season was completed. They decided to air, and, and they found out the show was from when Fox decided to remove the show for a second season. And knowing that they knew it, they gave, they gave them permission to air new or make new shows for the summer run. Because usually before that time, usually during the summer, they usually show all the networks, really, not just Fox. Uh, most of the networks show reruns of the shows they had during the season. Uh, Except for many occasions, they may have like a baseball game on during the week, maybe. Uh, or a nationally broadcasting game. Most of the time, it's, you know, you know reruns of the shows that aired during the 1990-91 season. But during the summer of 91, they decided to get new shows, or summer shows. So Brandon, we get to be, he's a pre working at the Beverly Hills Beach Club, and you see some of the girls. The store on the show in bikinis, three A. Hey, there's no television thing going on, and people got hurt during the summer episodes. And of course, when the second season regularly started in September, then the show really took off, and it was a hit for ten years, from 1990 to 2000. And of course, the girls were crazy, but the guys were on the show. Of course, like I said, Jason Priestley was on. 
was Ian Zeming, played Steve Sanders, you had Luke Perry who was the star, it was like James Dean almost on the show. Uh, played Dylan McKay, and of course you had uh, a guy who played Dave, David Silver for, for a moment, forgot his name for a moment. But for the girls, you know, like you said, you had Shannon Doherty, you had Jimmy, uh, uh, played Kelly, I forgot her, her last name. Uh, or Jane Goth played Kelly. You had Gabrielle Gutierrez played Andrea, who played the, the, the beautiful green girl on the show. Plus, you had Aaron Spelling's daughter, Tori Spelling, on the show, uh, playing Donna Moore. And of course, you had, uh, of course, two parents. You had uh, Carol Potter played Sidney Walsh, you had James Echo played. Uh, the father, Jim, Jim Walsh. And of course, the key to the show you, of course, eventually met, met the parents. Not all the parents in every case, because most of the kids, like a lot of the fathers were not, or the other kids were not on the show. At least maybe one or two episodes of that, in most of the cases. Uh, and especially for David Silver, but they never met him through the whole series. Uh, what made the show so good was, was that it dealt with. You know, real issues, real stuff the kids dealt with, and what, what you can make almost as, not exactly the same argument with the reboot show. With the reboot show, it didn't work. On nine two and all, for some reason, that this stuff worked. And the, and the one thing that kind of really bothered me about the sh about the show is that all the eight kids was the fact that they all got at one point or another. Almost most of them, not all of them, got addicted to drugs. The only ones who didn't get addicted to anything was, was Brandon, where he drank, had a couple of nights where he drank like crazy, and, and uh, like two or three nights on the show, but never got kind of beyond that being a, a drug addict. Brenda, she never was addicted to anything. And you had Andrea, who, who never got addicted to anything either. So those were the only three. The other five got addicted to drugs and booze and you know and anything else on that show. Um, well, the two parents they didn't get into any drug problems. On the on the Walsh on the Walsh parents they didn't, they didn't get into any problems with the drugs. But as the series went on, like I said, it got damn good shows. Uh, I think the second season, the well, third season as well. Uh, the second season, I think, had one of the better storylines because one of the original cast members, Douglas Emerson, his character was killed off pretty early on in the second season uh, because he, he was in the original season. Season, as a matter of fact, he was built in the opening credits. But when the second season started, he was not built anymore. He was like a part timer at that point, and. For some reason, they decided to eliminate one of the characters, um, and they killed his character off, who was supposed to be the best friend of David Silver's character, but he dumped him because he was still kind of geeky and dorky, a dorky character. And David Silver was over the summer, all of a sudden, became a popular guy, and like, like almost overnight, he became popular because his father was dating the mother of Kelly Taylor. So, who was one of the most popular girls, and they eventually became stepbrother and stepsister by the third season. Uh, but uh, because of that, he became a popular guy, and this guy was still in the same spot. People treated him like crap. And the first regular episode, on the back to school episode for the second season, they even found out that Scott is now all of a sudden obsessed with guns. So, you know where this was going to go down. After the Halloween episode, or the Tolkien Halloween show of Nine Two and in the second season, the very next episode it was when uh, David's friend Scott accidentally shot himself. He found a gun in his father's desk, was so twirling it around like the way it up, as they as I quote from the show, and he actually sh shot himself and and, was, and died. And of course, actually, they wanted to have this whole thing with um, him being. You know, Immortalized in the school paper, and they even went on the rant. It doesn't matter what you write in the paper. It doesn't matter what you say when somebody dies. Way it's how you it's how you treat them. And he was treated like like a piece of garbage because he wasn't cool. He wasn't cool enough for anybody. Uh, so that was a powerful episode. And then you had uh, 
before in the third season, which was became the senior year in high school. You know, the season started they were like sophomores. Uh, and the funny thing is that most of the cast, or ha at least half the cast, were over 20. Because Dylan McKay was over 20, or uh, Luke Perry was over 20, Jason Priestley was over 20 years old, Ian Searing was by like 20, for, um, 20 between 25 and 30 when the show first story. Uh, Anya Zuckerman, who or again we have to tell us it's already 30 away when the show story. But the rest of the cast was like either 17, 18, or 19. You know, I think Shannon Doyle was about 19 when when the show story. Uh, so it was kind of ridiculous that that uh, most of the cast were like, were like overaged. Um, so by the third season, they, that's when they had the whole graduation thing, and the, and the week before or two weeks before the graduation episode, they had a storyline where they had the prom and, and trying to cut down on drinking. And if anybody is caught drinking in the, in the prom, they're going to be sus, uh, suspended and not be able to, to graduate. You have to go to summer school and then graduate in summer school. Uh, so one of the cast members, uh, Donna, got drunk. Because she was planning to have sex with David at the farm, on the night of the same farm, and she got caught being drunk and she got suspended. And the parents, her parents were finding it, and they thought it was ridiculous because there was a, this was a girl who had a clean record, and she got caught. And so all of a sudden, those are the rules and everything else. And when they found out they were planning to catch the students who were, you know, bad students. The cash on it, and they didn't catch a bad, so they captured a good one. So, what the senior class did was they got up and walked down the finals, and they had this big protest over there, and they're all saying, Down on the bad things, and all that type of thing. And of course, they eventually forward and they won. Uh, so, Don got to graduate with the, with the whole class. Uh, which, you know, the whole final episode was like a two hour episode, the uh, graduation show. And they had one, one thing they did like is they showed a lot of flashbacks of stuff that happened during the first you know three years of the show. And the way the the show ended uh, or the graduation episode ended, it looked like there was going to be the end of the series. But we all it got renewed uh, for a fourth season when they, and they did college episodes. But when the fourth season ended, Shannon Doyle was pretty much kicked off the show. Because she was a pain in the butt. Uh, nobody liked her. She, she didn't get along with anybody, really. So she was, and she got into a fight with Aaron Spelling, who was, was like I said earlier, the father of Tori Spelling, played Donna. So, so she left in the fourth season. And that, to me, that's when the show started going down. It did some good episodes in the fifth, fifth and even in the sixth season. But after the sixth season, that's when the show sort of died down, and and the show lasted amazingly to me. Lasted ten years. I think it lasted like at least two years longer than it should have, uh, because eventually, by the end of the series, the family that was focused on beginning, the Walsh family, they all eventually left by the end of the series. Uh, so because when that happened, that's when the show sort of ended. Um, because like I said earlier, and then in the fourth season, Shannon Doyle left. So, so she, she left to study abroad, to go to college in, uh, in England, to say become an actress. So so she left, and then eventually, I think by the end of the seventh or maybe eighth season around there, the parents left. They were, oh, we don't need the parents anymore. So the parents left. We wanted to play Jim and Sidney Walsh, they left. And then eventually, by the next season, or by the eighth of ninth season, um, Brandon left the show. J.C. Priestley left. He never, and, and none of these actors ever came back on the show. Uh, on, the, on the original one. Uh, the only one who, who act, well, actually wrong, the only one who did came, came back on the show was Luke Perry. After two years, he came back on the show and he stayed on to the end. But, uh, nobody, nobody else, Chan Dorley never came back. Uh, and I'm, and uh, Gabriel Cortez was playing on where she left, but she came back for the final episode. And and the one she came, but to replace Sean Doherty, uh, Tiffany Amber Thiessen from Save the Bell, replaced Sean Doherty on the show, and she, and she she didn't have a fine job. And then eventually she left. The one replaced Sean Do replaced Sean Doherty, left 
and she also came back for the final episode as well. Uh, so, so you have that. Uh, but the final episode of the series was when Donna and David got married. Uh, there was a final episode, but there's one thing that I want, do want to touch on, and I think there's still some time left uh, to, to discuss the thing that there was a controversy during the first season. Uh, one of the early episodes of the first season of the show was when Brandon's old girlfriend, uh, her name was Shell, came from Minnesota to visit him in uh, Beverly Hills. And on the first night that she was set there in the, in the Wolf's house, she slept with Brandon, and it was the episode where Brandon lost his virginity. And they had a pre. Well, I'm not saying I'm not saying Ethan went too long of a, lo of a love story. Or, or love scene. It was just, you know, not TV long enough of a love scene between Brandon and his old girlfriend. And towards the end of the first season, they had an episode when, when Brandon had sex, for, lost her virginity to Dylan, the Dylan McCain character. And what happened was they had like a spring dance in his hotel. So that's when Brandon and Dylan decided, oh, let's fix the hotel room and we. They have sex. And they're ready to have sex for the first time with him. That's when that hotel room. So, so okay, so they go to the hotel room. All you, all you saw there was them take, sort of taking off their clothes in the hotel room. The door closes, and that's it. You never saw them doing, having a love scene or them in bed together afterwards. And you didn't see that. All you saw them was on the dance floor after they did the deed. So a lot of people were complaining over the fact that they had this love, long love scene with Brandon and not Brenda. Uh, so there's a controversy there, and another thing that also became kind of like a, not only a controversy, but kind of like a joke, was that Donna, played by Tori Spelling, like I said earlier, the daughter of Aaron Spelling, was the last one of the major characters of the show, the lowest the virginity on the show. But when we were in real life, she was actually was a slut in real life, she was fooling around everybody until when she settled down and got married. I was punching out kids like every nine months would punch out another kid. But that's a whole other uh, story. But on the show, she was the last one to lose her virginity on the show. By the uh, even by the end of the fifth season, not about everybody on the show had, had sex at least once with at least one partner, except for Donna. And it became it became a joke. Uh, the reason why Gabriel Pateros's character and Donna's character was the last two to lose the Virginia of the major characters because Gabriel Pateros in real life was, mar was married at the time and she still is as far as I know still married today but she ended up getting pregnant uh, by her husband so, so with the first trial so they're saying to write her pregnancy into the storyline which they they could have avoided it but they're saying to write it into the storyline and so that's why uh, they decided to have her carry loose virginity at that point. When she announced that she was pregnant to the producers of the show, and said, look, I'm pregnant, I have a baby, my husband. So they decided to, to tell them when we went out to write this in or not. They decided to write it in, and she agreed, and that's how they, uh, that's how they got away with that stuff. But, but uh, Donna, she felt like guilty of losing her journey to a good Christian or Catholic, whatever, whoever her religion was on the show. And so she felt guilty and she eventually did give in. But he had sex with David. And David had lost his virginity first because he, he got so disgusted over the fact that, that he couldn't have sex with Donna. He got so disgusted over the whole thing. So, so uh, he had sex with somebody else. She, he didn't wait for her. Uh, of course, uh, and then she finally, she finally gave in and had a whole big scene after the after they graduated from college episode in the end of the seventh season. But uh, that became, kind of became a joke after a while. But like I said, then after the series ended in 2010, 2000, like seven or eight years later, they decided to put on a reboot show on CW Network and even though they did bring back a couple of the original characters from Mario to and they brought back uh, Donna, they brought back Kelly for a while, they brought back Eva Shannon Dorley came back. 
Well, the case you had uh, Joe E. Taylor for playing Nap and you know, the Peach Pen on for, for like two or three episodes. But for them, but I like to see, I, I love the fact that they brought these characters back. And I love the fact more than they brought Shannon Dorney back to end her little storyline in, in the Beverly Hills universe. But I thought that show was so, and then eventually they stopped doing that. And they focus on the new, the new characters. And the only difference between the new show and the reboot is that on the original show they had characters they actually cared about. On the reboot, I hated all the characters. They all stuck. They all were terrible. They all were lousy actors. The women who they hired to play the characters were like beautiful girls. I'm not saying they're not women. But that's because they were hot and good looking on television. They're not mean they were good actors. It wasn't. God awful, terrible television show. It was. Uh, and I'm still done finding to the state when that show lasted five years. No way in hell should that show, in any sense of imagination, last for five years. Uh, in the case of the original show, I think it lasts like at least two years longer than it should have. Probably even three years longer. Uh, but I still recommend people watch the show. Like I said, said earlier, you can catch most of my own videos on YouTube. I suggest any of you out there to, to go on to YouTube, look, look for the show, watch it, and those of you who didn't grow up with that show like I did, could, could watch the show and see how good it is and compare that to the reboot. It's like, look, it's like comparing the New York Yankees to the Bad News Bears. I mean, in terms of how, how bad the, the, the reboot is. So let me review of Beverly Hills 9 and 2 no? Please click on the, uh, uh, the, the, please click on the video, please make it, feel free to comment on it. Please, uh, subscribe to my channel, and please, uh, follow this video on your Facebook pages. Thanks for watching, catch you next time, and please check out my other videos as well. Catch you next time.